there is new research that uh, gray is from a stressful event and that you can reverse gray by removing yourself from the stress. Really? Okay. So at first I thought you were going to say, well, Matt, you know, there's a new research that says that uh, gray hair is really in right now and uh, ladies love it. Ladies are into it. Dudes. I mean, dudes have it so different. That's true. Dudes have it so easy with gray hair. That's fair. Um, yeah. Mine's been showing up over the past year. Like, basically, it shows up in your sideburns first. Start showing up mm-hmm. in those sideburns, you know, mm-hmm. up close to your ear. And then now I'm getting the sides of my, my head. And uh, your temples. You think I should, uh, what is that? Should I quit my job? Is that what that means? I can't think of other. Well, that's what they're they're saying. Remove yourself to reverse the gray. Remove yourself from the stressful situation. But if it's something that you can't control, like if it's um, grief or if it's um, illness. Yeah. You can't remove yourself from that situation. You're just stuck. Mm. But if it's something that you can control, they say if you want your hair to reverse then you should remove yourself from the stressful situation. Now, this isn't like me. I've been coloring my hair for mm, eight years now, nine years. Um, I don't think I can reverse it now. I think I'm too far gone. So, but maybe if you're going gray right now, maybe it's an event of stress and you should remove yourself. An event of stress. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned to future editions of Matt and Kate to see if I'm still here. Or if your hair goes back. It might be the name of the show could just be and Kate. It's kind of catchy, actually. Why wouldn't it be Kate and? Time for Kate. Well, because it's Matt and Kate. So if I get removed, I thought maybe it would just be and Kate. But I guess it could be Kate and. You could rearrange the, yeah. the words. Yeah, sure. It runs downhill, Matt. New new person gets the second billing. Kate and. But clearly they're going to try to. Do this on the cheap and just be like, hey, Kate, can you just talk to yourself? (laughs) Maybe you can do a character voice. Can you be, can you sound like you're two people? Uh, Right. Go for it, Kate. Uh, I want to hear, I want to hear Kate and Kate. Kate and Kate. Yeah. Can you do a conversation between you and then some voice? I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but. uh, I know. Can you give me a subject matter? Three, two, one, go. No topic. Oh, a topic. Uh, Going gray due to stress. Oh, that's boring. Okay, so Kate, <laughs> I was uh, at the store the other day, and I saw this uh, bag of chips, and they look like Lay's potato chips. Ooh, I love Lay's potato chips. You know, with French onion dip? Yeah, okay, but these bags of Lay's potato chips were labeled like Cheetos. What do you mean Lay's potato chips looking like Cheetos? I know. Lay's has a new line of potato chips where there's Cheetos, Funyuns, and Cool Ranch Doritos, but they're not. They're Lay's potato chips. To taste like those. I don't believe it. I'm for real. You can get them at the store right now. End scene. That was very good. Um, You do probably need to like pitch up or pitch down one of the voices. Yeah. Two different voices. You're but, right. Uh, it did sound like two sides of a conversation for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, you don't have a, you don't have a voice in the, uh, in the chamber you can summon. Well, I, I probably could have, but I was pretty much giving you a glimpse of what happens in my own head. Oh, okay. And in my own head, I don't always have different voices. It's just me. Well, that's handy that you at least have two parts of, that you have a dialogue, I guess, already built in there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, always with the dialogue. But I could be Kate and I could be like, hey, it's Kate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Do we trust this research that you saw about going gray due to stress? What do you think? It was from Harvard. Oh, those elitists. I, no, no, no. You got to do it like Goodwill Hunting. They're wicked smart. They're wicked smart at Harvard. I just said they're elitists. I know. I was just saying Harvard, wicked smart. I'm, yeah, I can't. I can't do it. Okay. I guess I could, but right here in front of everybody for the first time. Okay. Yeah, new study. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at this thing now. Okay. A lot of times they point at presidents going gray. You're like, see, oh, yeah. see how stressful the job is? And like, well, yeah, but all these presidents are old, were elected at similar ages. And yeah, turn gray about the same time that everybody else turns gray. So I don't know if I buy mm-hmm. the presidential comparison, but if they've actually got research, Harvard deal, 
because they actually have a f- photo here of young young Obama, quote young Obama versus quote old right. Obama next to each other. Looks like he's wearing the same tie almost. Similar knot, similar pattern on that tie. Hmm. I had very few grays leading up to when I was 32. Very few. I could tweeze the grays and it'd be fine because they were right around my face. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned this one day and it was just, oh my God. Yeah. I did not, did not sound fun. And then my dad passed away and I had an infant and I went real gray, real fast, but not in the back where I don't care, like all up front where I do care. So where I was told before that stress doesn't cause that, you know, it, it's just you're going to go gray at this age and it just so happens that you've got a lot going on. But now this new research is that if it's a stressful situation, but you can't control like illness or, or grief or yeah. So out of your hands. Yeah. So for someone who never spent a dime on hair products or <laughs> like decent haircuts or anything like that, I was just like, eh, it'll grow back. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I never colored my hair. Didn't I could care less about my hair. Uh, now I spend a fortune on my hair. Now I'm like, take all of my money. Here you go. Exactly. Thanks. Every four and a half weeks. Well, it, uh, <laughs> I've never noticed a gray hair, Kate, so... I guess. Well, your eyesight should be checked, but I appreciate that. I guess worth it. I guess worth it. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. Your hair is so dark. That it shows up. (laughs) Yeah, you got that contrast issue, whereas mine's pretty, Mm -hmm. pretty light brown. So mine's not as apparent, but once you get up on me, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, your life must be messed up. Either that or people will be like, wow, he looks so wise. Yeah. That's what they say about men when they go gray. He looks so distinguished. I think he's more handsome. <laughs> right. Right. Women are like, wow, what a hag. I currently feel like a touch of gray commercial. You know, like that's the level of gray in here. I don't think you have enough for that, Matt. No, I mean, I feel like I'm the after shot. Oh, okay. You know, like there's just a little bit of maybe. Okay, maybe I'm not quite there yet, but uh, you know where it's just like there's a touch of gray. But no, uh, no product, no product in this hair outside of the baby shampoo I use every so often. Yeah, you don't you don't even look like the before product for touch of gray. Well, you're not there yet. Wait, I thought the after the after the before shot is lots of gray. Yeah. And then the after shot is they've added enough color to leave the touch of gray there. I don't think you belong in that commercial at all. You don't have enough. Fine. Yeah. Own it, Matt. Own it. So I now have the story in front of me. From news.harvard.edu slash gazette slash story. And they studied mice. And so they made mice all stressed out and then watched the pigment do its thing. Hmm. What did I tell you about Harvard? Wicked smart. I guess. That's your Matt Damon impersonation? I don't think Matt Damon says it. Oh, um, Ben Affleck? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Robin Williams. No, I was going to say it might be. Casey Affleck. Oh, is Casey Affleck in that film? Yeah, oh, okay. he's Morgan. That. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen that movie a few times. And it's really good, yeah. I love that movie. But I can't summon the character names, any of them, really. Yeah. I can name the a few actors that are in it. That's it. Mm, good movie. I saw that uh, he, I briefly saw, I mean, you know, I see headlines and then don't click through. And then I tell people that I read them as if I read the whole story. Uh, are they Instagram official now? That being Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez? I think I saw something about They are official. Yeah. On Instagram. Mm. Mm-hmm. She just had her birthday party on a yacht. And. Uh, Shared some Instagrams. Posted pictures of them smooching. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The non paparazzi. Yep. Instagram official. Mm-hmm. An important mm-hmm. step. An important step. It's legit. Now, you and Monty have been married. Let me try this again for 13 years. 12. No. What year is it? Oh, no. It's 13 or 14. <laughs> this is the year 2021, Kate. Okay, so this will be 13. So 12 and a half years. Ooh, lucky. Lucky 13. You like 13. I do like 13. So back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, do you remember you and Monty getting social media official? Like, did you get so uh, face, Facebook official? Do you remember that moment? We didn't. You didn't? 
didn't. Opted out of, was that even a thing? He, I don't think it was a thing. And he did not have Facebook then. Oh, good money. Trailblazer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trailblazer. Yeah, not starting Facebook before everyone else went ahead and started stopping theirs. Oh, okay. Kind of hurt my brain to say that sentence. Is he, he currently uses Facebook though, right? Uh, he's got an account. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't post anything. I tag him in things every now and then. So there we go. Benifer, Instagram official. How are you feeling about this relationship, Kate? We've talked about it from time to time. We've talked about it from time to time. Okay, so uh, she celebrated her birthday on a yacht in uh, St. Tropez. Am I saying that right? Mm, Sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, so Alex Rodriguez, who she just broke off her engagement with, and that was her ex-boyfriend, he has a July birthday, too, that's really close to hers, and he celebrated his birthday on a yacht not very far from her in St. Tropez. And it's like, come on, dude. You couldn't get a yacht anywhere else. You're going to look like that guy who just happens to be in the neighborhood. Copycat. Or stalker. Well, maybe they were doing, re- maybe when he was with J-Lo, when it was j Rod, maybe they had done some research and found out that that was an ideal place to hit up. Maybe. Sure. You know, like, oh, on our honeymoon, we should go to St. Tropez or Trope or however you say it. And it'll be a time. Tell you what. And then they break up, and then they both separately book, book uh, yacht vacations. Mm, I'm saying it's not a coincidence. And these yachts, they have like their own captains, right, on these yachts? Yeah. So they could always change course. True. I'm just saying, of all the gin joints, A-Rod is there. Come on now. What do you, th- you think he's just, what do you think he's doing? Stalking her? Yes. He's got his binoculars out. Maybe maybe we'll bump into each other. Maybe we'll like, oh, what are you doing here? What are you? Oh, so good to see you. Or Right. He can be kind yeah. of passive aggressive jerk to Ben mm-hmm. Affleck, maybe. Mm-hmm. What's up, Brian? But ben Affleck's capable of dishing it back. Oh, for sure. I just think he could have been anywhere. He picked the same place. Hmm. So J-Lo and A-Rod hanging out in the same sea. Separate yachts. Separate yachts. Hers has Ben Affleck on there. His has, he has some lots of young women. Floozies. Okay. There he goes. Well, let's not say floozies. He's we got don't some know. he's got some young ladies there. Yeah. Potentially floozed. But let's not jump to conclusions. Yes. Right. Good point, Kate. Thanks. Did you know that there's such a thing as lemonade stand etiquette? Lemonade stand etiquette. So this being uh, a child has set up a little stand roadside and they're charging 50 cents or something or maybe a buck for some lemonade. Okay. So there's etiquette. I guess there's a Facebook post that's going viral where a woman scolds her community for driving past her kid's lemonade stand. Quote, like they had something more important to do than say hi and mingle with her children. End quote. She said it's general rule of etiquette. Oh, okay. And at the end... At the end, she said, at one point, I had to put up a barricade forcing drivers to pull over and acknowledge my children. It should never have to come to this. Be a better citizen. That's the <laughs> etiquette? Okay, so this is one person's thoughts on what this etiquette is. This is one person's thought, yeah. As opposed to your etiquette about cupcakes where you tear a cupcake right. in half and right. then make, the, make a frosting sandwich with the two mm-hmm. halves, which you confirmed... Mm-hmm. That other people do. Yeah. That is cupcake etiquette. It still blows my mind that that is like etiquette implies that that's like a mainstream thing. Or like it's polite and those are the manners. It's polite to tear a cupcake in half. It's not polite to put the whole cupcake in your mouth at once, Matt. Why you just nibble at it? How do you nibble at the cake with the frosting? You got to kind of bite into the frosting. Mm hmm. And then you got to kind of bite into the lower part, which is just cake. No, you're, the more we talk about this, the more it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it still is like, well, why doesn't the cupcake just come that way? So it can look pretty. Yeah. It looks like it has a hat. It's got a pretty hat when you get it. Just like on Seinfeld. Like, why do muffins have bottoms? I just want the muffin top. Yeah, top of the muffin to you. Mm-hmm. All right, so lemonade stand. This woman claims the etiquette is that 
you drive by a lemonade stand, you better slam on the brakes, park, and uh, go talk to the children. Are you obligated yeah. to make a purchase or not? Uh, she added that the lemonade most likely sucks. It's <laughs> probably warm, possibly a bug floating in the ice. But the children are cute, and they don't understand why you aren't stopping when they are clearly asking you to stop. Hmm. And for what for what it's worth, the lemonade was free. Oh, I mean, my kids want a lemonade free. stand so badly, but. We're not on a road with a lot of traffic, and I don't know that I want strangers stopping to talk to my kids, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. to me, that's the biggest deal. It's like, what's with this creep pulling over and getting lemonade by himself? Right? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I'd get looks, but... But we did we did Kool-Aid stands when we were kids. Plus, I get a really creepy look on my face when it seems like I'm about to get lemonade. For whatever reason, yeah. it's just like a reflex. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I have oh, stopped for kids before. Big creepy smile. And given them like a dollar or something. And yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. But I don't know. I just don't want it for my kids. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So you're in a not so well trafficked neighborhood, mm-hmm. which is uh, a blessing. Enjoy that while it lasts because your neighborhood's right. still being developed, right? Well, the way our neighborhood sits especially during the summer when there's not school going on, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of traffic. Have the kids asked you about this? They've asked you about this multiple Mm -hmm. times? Mm Mm-hmm. When was the first interest expressed? Uh, When we lived in Kansas. So a couple years ago. Okay, so it would have been around 9, 10, somewhere. But we lived on on a dead end then. Oh, well, yeah, that's also not helpful. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, it's helpful for me. Oh, man, it's not going to work. Can you find a relative or a friend that has a street that's got lots of traffic? I'm sure we could. So there you go. If I wanted to. Oh, fair enough. Womp womp. So you had a Kool-Aid stand when you were a kid? Is that what you said? Yeah. No, we made Kool-Aid instead of lemonade, which, you know, it's a powdery juice mix. It's kind of gutsy, but yeah. Why is it gutsy? Well, it's uh, it's challenging. I'm not saying... it's you're challenging the norms, Kate. This is a good thing. It's not. It's not a. That's all we do. It's not a bad. Yeah, it's what you do. Okay. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Yeah, you're like okay. You know what? I go against the grain. Kool Aid stand. Yeah, that's what we had. <laughs> Did you have grape? Probably cherry or fruit punch. Yeah, I think grape was always my favorite as a kid. Mine too. Yeah, I never really liked fruit punch. I felt like there were, there were too many fruits in there. But that's why you serve it to people that you don't know. You should keep the grape Kool Aid for yourself. Serve the stuff that you don't like. <laughs> right. And scare, and scare them away with fruit punch. Yeah. I mean, they don't know. It's like she said, it's a, it's a warm drink. It's cute kids. So when was the last time you, uh, you stopped? When was the last time you hit up a lemonade stand, Kate? I am feeling mm. pressure now, by the way, to make this happen at some point. Honestly, I can't say the last time that I've seen a lemonade stand since we, I, I don't think I've seen a lemonade stand since we've moved here. Tragic. I know in Kansas we did a couple of times. Well, you know, Kansas, it is the uh, lemonade state. True. True. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Okay. Kate and I are clearly lying. Sunflower state. You ever uh, make sunflower juice? No. Nom, nom. All right. Sunflower seeds. Okay. Pickle flavored. My favorite. Yeah. That was nice of you to hook me up with some of those... uh, Recently, that was enjoyable. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I do like sunflower seeds. I feel very productive when I've got sunflower seeds. You know, especially you load up one cheek with all the sunflower seeds. Oh, yeah. And then you break them with your tooth and you move them over to the other side. Yeah. I feel pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty deluxe. Plus, I can play like, oh, look, I'm a baseball player, you know? You just spit them out all willy-nilly? All over the place. Yeah. Okay. I typically clean them up, but yeah, yeah. No, I get them into a cup mostly. Yeah, I don't have sunflowers often enough because even though it does feel productive, I, they're not especially filling. No, but I like them in the car when we have to drive places, like lengthier drives than just here and there, because then I'm doing something. Yeah, but I'm not like eating a bag of chips. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, well, and it's a very popular choice. For someone who's looking to like stop chewing, you know, stop uh, mm. chewing tobacco or stop smoking because it gives their mouth something to, to work on. Okay. But I think I would need to get 
salt free if I were in that case because like I can only have so many sunflower seeds before my lips are like, what are you doing? Yeah, but why would you eat them without salt on them? Apply some chapstick, please. That's pointless. Well, because uh, it tears up your mouth, right? Yeah, but it doesn't taste good. Yeah, I guess then, Jan, what is the point? Yeah, you just got dirty seeds in your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you're going to eat a bunch of dirty sunflower (laughs) seeds, make make sure they're salted, please. All right. They're not cleaning those off. No. But there's there's good fiber in that sunflower seed dust or whatever. Whatever right. it is. <laughs> now, are you due to do a garage sale or anything like that? No. Never again. Okay. You unloaded a bunch of stuff and sent it to a charity, right? Yeah. I will not do a garage sale again. Are you done paring down uh, your collection of stuff? No. That's a constant okay. daily battle, Matt. <laughs> For the unfamiliar, Kate moved into her new house in March. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're coming up on like five months there. Mm-hmm. And do you regret not decluttering more before you moved? A little bit, but I wasn't in a place to declutter. Yeah, you know, I was just talking about this to someone recently. I mean, like someone had mentioned... Uh, what's the get rid of it if it doesn't sparkle up your day? What, what's the joy? If it doesn't, if you touch the item and if it doesn't give you joy, toss it. That's the Marie Kondo. There you go. Way that was the yeah. name I was looking for. Yeah. So yeah. I started referencing her, and I said, "Well, my concern is that I'm going to get in the state of mind where I want to get rid of a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. and then regret getting getting rid of a bunch of stuff when my mind gets back down to to base level of." this is the amount of stuff I need. You know, like the motivation to get rid of stuff isn't there until the frustration with stuff is so high Mm -hmm. that I Mm -hmm. worry about throwing away stuff that I will regret. Or that you feel like you're in a place to make those decisions because if you are under the gun as far as like time, I don't think you're in a good place to make those decisions. Yes, get rid of it. No, keep it. Um, But I read something recently that, you know, Marie Kondo says you touch it and do you feel joy? keep it if you don't get rid of it i read something um i think it was the minimalist mom on her blog she said have a friend or have someone who's not in your family like not in your immediate family so like maybe have your mom help you Mm -hmm. um but that person should hold the item you shouldn't touch it oh because if you touch it you are more likely to make an emotional response versus like No, get rid of that. So minimalist mom is kind of anti Marie Kondo then, right? mm, She's like, touch it and it sparks joy. Watch out. Yeah. You might get rid of it. She's like, it takes a team and it's not who lives with you. Maybe that's how I should put it. Somebody that doesn't live with you. Yeah. So basically they can, yeah, they they just take possession of the things. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's going to be some things that are like you have no attachment to whatsoever. You're like, why do I Mm -hmm. still have this thing? And you can toss it. But for those kind of borderline things, yeah, have a friend kind of check you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Because at at the same time, your friend's going to be like, really? You need this? And you're like, yeah, you're right. Okay, go ahead. Get rid of it. So uh, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, Matt, I will let you hold up all my things in the garage and uh, (laughs) we'll keep a a keep pile in the trash can right next to it. Uh, you're You're inviting me to bring over a bunch of junk that's from my house. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I was saying you could come touch my stuff and I'll say, keep trash, <laughs> keep trash. I suppose I could okay. do the same for you if you like. Right. I'm like, I'm sorry, Kate, but these wedding photos are, are just aren't doing it for me. They're not sparking joy at all. I know, right? It's awesome. Get him out of here. Come on. Out the door. Monty is so good. He's so handy. He insulated our garage. So when we built the house, they weren't going to insulate the garage. And so Monty was like, then just don't finish it and I'll do it myself. So he's insulating the garage. He's sheetrocking and he's painting and then he's building shelves. And I'm like, I love it. This is great. And he's like, but, and I go, I didn't say, but, and he's like, no, I know that, but, and I was like, I didn't say, but (laughs) I know that, but (laughs) he's like, but we don't need more stuff to go on the shelves. I was like, "Uh, I wasn't going to say that, (sighs) but (laughs) (laughs) you're right. (laughs) I thought maybe. It was, but go downstairs and finish my studio. 
All right. My studio, I feel like, is not fully armed and operational. Yeah. It's not. Not yet. I don't think so. Yeah. Not yet. I kind of want to say, finish the studio and get my bathroom going. So that I've got a bathroom right next to my studio. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, you want to, if you're working, mm-hmm. you want to minimize the uh, the downtime, right? Get right to the can. I mean, here's the real reason. Every time I'm working and I have to go upstairs to go to the bathroom, the dog follows me and the oh. dog doesn't understand. I'll be right back. Just stay right here. Okay. Oh, rock me. If he sees me working and then goes to the bathroom downstairs, be like, she's coming right back. She'll be fine. I don't need to get up. A baby gate. Or, or will he freak out? He might freak out. Okay. Old dog. I read something today about dogs that have the worst separation anxiety, like for people going back to work after they got all these puppies during the pandemic. Yeah. And people going back to work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. Labs are top of the list. Labs are top of list for being anxious about their owner going back to work? Yeah. Separation anxiety. It's a real thing with labs. Okay. It is, especially if you've been spending a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. Which you do. And then you're gone. So have you thought about maybe just having a toilet in front of the microphone there in your studio? I have not, actually. No. no that has never crossed my mind, Matt. Mm, might not be good for the acoustics in that room. Never mind. Mm, probably not. Probably not. And then if you flush the toilet and it splashes out of there, you could fry some of your electronics. It seems like a very permanent uh, seat. I wouldn't be able to like move things around. Yeah, we don't want that. Uh, yeah. I uh, didn't really think that went through before I suggested it. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Hmm. But uh, you've got the standing desk at home, right? Or it's a sit stand? It's a sit stand. I mean, I can stand if I want. So you actually modify the height of the desk, right? I can. Oh, okay. I usually leave it pretty high. Okay, because here at the radio station, we have a... uh, Most of the station... Well, not most. Actually, just two of them... Q Country and Kajo both have stand-up studios Mm -hmm. where you stand up, but the desk is stationary and you have a tall chair as the Mm -hmm. result, as the the thing that makes it sittable. And I'm curious why more, why this is, I'm curious why this isn't more popular instead of these desks uh, that you got to engage with instead. You know, like why raise the desk if you could just raise the chair? I guess maybe your feet touching the floor is... Much more satisfying. I don't know. You have thoughts? What do you think, Kate? No, I don't know why they do that. So at your house, do you have do you sit ever at that desk? Yeah. And half and half. Do you do it on a taller chair or do you actually bring the desk down? No, I have a taller chair. Oh, okay. I have a taller chair and I have a suitcase under my desk that I rest my feet on because the the footrest on the chair isn't big enough or not tall enough so i kind of wish you would just sit on phone books after that <laughs> after that uh, mental image you know well i don't have phone books oh yeah they're tough to find aren't they yeah no it's the the foot it's the foot stand is too short then because it's just tippy toes so that's why i've got the gotcha suitcase to rest my feet on under my desk yeah it used to be not that long ago actually that i feel like i was getting three or four different brands of yellow slash white pages a year. I felt like I was constantly getting served these up and I'm like, stop giving me recycling. Get out of here. Yeah. We don't have phone books. I'm sure that there's one kicking around my house somewhere, but yeah, they go immediately into the recycling as does most everything that shows up in my mail. Most things. Yeah. I don't go to my mailbox very often. Oh, yeah, you've got your mailbox is down at the street. Is that right? Yeah, it is. It's actually up the hill. <laughs> it's a communal mailbox. You got a key to and a whole bunch of your neighbors have mail in there, too. It's a, yeah, it's a cluster box. Yeah. Yep. And uh, mine's just outside my door, which is handy, but yes, less efficient for the postal service, for sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We yeah. My mom will send me a text like, hey, I mailed you something. Go ke- go check your mail. I'm like, oh, okay. It's right. probably been long enough. I need to go check that anyways. And then you open the mail door and all the mail comes shooting out from all the pressure that's been built up. <laughs> no, it's not even like 
That's the other thing. You would think that these would be smaller boxes, but these are pretty good sized boxes. It can hold a lot of mail, Matt. It can hold a lot of mail. When I did the change of address, I did it yeah. electronically. So now the post office sends me a preview of what's coming in my mailbox. Oh, that's right. What's that called? They scan it and let's see if I can find it. USPS informed delivery, your daily digest. Informed delivery. That's it. So I can see all the junk mail that's coming. <laughs> and if there's something that's coming like a birthday card yeah. or something from a particular place, I'm like, oh, I got to go get those. Yeah. And it reminds you that your child has a birthday, which is nice. Handy reminder. Oh, I just got my mail. Like vehicle alert notice, that's in the mailbox. We don't need to go yeah. get that. Time to lower your rates. Mm, no. Now, when and, and that's a free service to have them do that. Mm-hmm. However, when you changed your and it's been a luckily it's been a long time since I've had to do a change of address. Doesn't the postal service kind of opt you into a bunch of junk mail? Is that right? Am I misremembering? I I don't know if you're misremembering or if it's legit, but I know that when you build or buy a house. You get a bunch of junk mail anyways because of people trying to sell you uh, lawn services right, or right. security systems or insurance. So I get a lot of junk mail. Womp womp. Womp womp. Well, I feel, <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, you know, I got that Target card months ago. Mm-mm. Remember? I mentioned that like when I was hunting for video game consoles, signed up for a Target card with the idea that I could get 5% back on it. I'm hmm. really certain I mentioned this on the show. I don't remember that part, but go ahead. Well, I don't blame you. Uh, so let me talk about it again anyway. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I feel like once I got that card, I started getting offers all the time for other credit cards. I feel like that might be one of the ways that Target monetizes their credit card is to Go ahead and uh, make your name av- and address available to all kinds of creditors. Just anecdotally, just anecdotally, I feel I feel like every week I'm throwing away new stuff. Is that just Target? Well, that's when I noticed the increase begin. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like since I did that, like maybe there was a month before I started just getting multiple credit card offers every week. I'm just saying Target's probably not the only credit card that does that, right? Oh, yeah, probably not. Probably yeah. not. I just don't remember opening lines of credit in the past and being bombarded with mm. a bunch of stuff at once. But they're probably out there. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. I still like Target. I st- to be clear, I still enjoy Target. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not down on Target in general. Just I'm saying the credit card. Do you like it? Made me get a whole bunch more credit card applications in the mail. Oh, gotcha. But now that I'm starting to think I've opened two new credit cards since we've moved to the house for things specifically. Oh, yeah. Like appliances? No, like no. Uh, oh. for our couch okay. and for our bar stools. Close enough. Okay. No, the appliances come with the house. Um, I don't know that I have. I know one of them I have gotten a lot of credit card, but I also wondered if that was because we just bought a house type of thing. Well, if I had signed up for two cards at the same time, I don't think yeah, I would it's have... It's hard to figure that out. Right, been able to figure that out. Mm-hmm. I wonder, how do they find out? How do these people find, like, oh, look at this, new home construction? Uh, because uh, they have to... They can search for new addresses? No. Um, this I'm going to butcher it, Matt, but it's like when you... Uh, get your title when you get your all that stuff is public information. Oh, right. So they're just yeah. able to monitor the appropriate. So they're yeah, they're able to go in and be like, oh, these people all built houses, or these people all bought houses, or yeah, get them. Yeah, specifically like building houses. I can't remember our, our house in Kansas, but like I've gotten so many junk mail pieces for um interior stuff like blinds and um design interior design people okay interesting but that's what like wow is this how you guys drum up a lot of your business that's interesting every penny matters yeah 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 but i'm yeah it was just surprising like oh, they built a new house they need new curtains they need blinds quick let's get them 
That way, Chad and Anna, Gene and Kim, Kevin and Valerie, Mark and Gail aren't staring at you Mm -hmm. while you walk about your place. I got them all correct, right? I got all your neighbors correct, right? You got them all right. Yeah. Right. Gail is finally etched into my brain. Committed. Okay. I don't know if I can take another couple. We'll see. Well, I don't think you have to worry about another couple. (laughs) Because you're insulated from future neighbors? No, there's just no houses. Oh, yeah. Someday. Someday. Maybe. Okay, well, stay tuned to a future edition of Matt and Kate. Or join us again for a future edition of Matt and Kate. There we go. (laughs) 